There are four words that we should not take for, take for granted when they are used together. And those words are education is the key. And that's very, very true for several areas of our society. Politically, socially, economically, medicinally. Uh, we just got through talking to uh, a cardiologist, uh, education, ec economic, either politically, and any discipline that, 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 that you name or that you think of, education plays an important role in the successes of those disciplines. <clears throat> one thing that we overlook is that one cannot just pop up and be educated. There has to be a process involved. And today, uh, we have with us a young lady and an institution that are involved in, that's got a proven record, really, in the process of uh, uh, education is the key and assisting in our community. This is a call to action. A call to action. And I'm your host, Alex Havisham, interviewing today Dr. Michelle Curry, uh, who's the executive director? Uh, yes, director of federal trio program. Yeah, of the federal trio program, which has done a phenomenal job and really got some age on it. Now, it's not so old that I was a student in Oberbein, <laughs> but I just missed it. But I do happen to know a whole lot of people who are, you know, over 40 yes, who have participated in one of the programs under the auspices of, 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 of Dr. Curry. And, and so just tell us a little bit about yourself and give me uh, also some structure on how that program is set up. Um, well, as you stated, I am Michelle Curry. I'm the uh, director of federal trio programs at Mercer University. I've been there since uh, 1998, and um, I came um, when I initially came. It was not as director. I came as a counselor in one of the uh, federal grant programs, under which at that time was under the direction of Sam Park. And uh, once he retired, then I was uh, fortunate enough to be selected to take over. And um, you know, it's been a real pleasure to work with students that come from similar backgrounds that I came from. Um, as you probably know, Upper Bound, as well as the other TRIO programs, and Mercer has three, um, they serve students who are considered at any type of disadvantage, are typically underserved when it comes to higher education. So um, students, if they um, are first generation, for example, you know, that's one of the requirements. Um, students, if they come from low income backgrounds is a requirement. We've also had programs that work specifically or are targeted uh, veterans and uh, the disabled. And so any student that, that is considered a disadvantage is, is what we look for. And um, you know, it's interesting that you mentioned the history of Upper Bound because next year will be the 50th anniversary of wow. Upper Bound. And wow. Mercer University was one of the very first programs uh, funded under the Higher Education Act of 1965. So um, the Department of Ed, which funds the, um, the uh, money for the program, um, they are, in addition to our professional associations, are planning, you know, all sorts of celebrations and advertisements and videos and so on and so forth. So we're really excited about it. I'm excited about that too. Mm -hmm. Now, when you said trio, does that mean it's three different programs? It started out as three. Okay. And then when they expanded, the name just stuck. Okay. And they never changed it. And so we have um, some of the first ones are Upper Bound. Um, student Support Services um, and Educational Opportunity Center are the three that Mercer has. And then um, there's also um, Educational Talent Search, or ETS. Um, there's the Ronald McNair Post Baccalaureate Program. There is um, um, goodness, oh, Upper Bound Math Science and Veterans Upper Bound. Um, and I believe that that should cover the game. And all of these are funded by the Department of Education. That is correct. Oh, uh, that's very, very interesting. Now, um, Give me an idea of the kind of activity uh, uh, and, 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 and functions and that you all do in trying to, you know, it's such a challenge, and I talked to you about that uh, not too long ago, in trying to just make sure, because I'm a firm believer that, you know, all kids can achieve, you know, and sometimes we overlook, you know, watch me, the... the, the
www.makingblackpages.com is that most of the faculty that work for us are Mercer faculty. So they are actually tenured faculty. Um, some of them are even chairs of their department. Wow. So we're really, exactly, we have a strong support system there. And um, one faculty member in particular, uh, Kendrick Hartfield, who we just gave him an award, I think about two years ago, because he'd been with us for th uh, 30 years, yeah, wow. working with Upper Bound. So uh, now students may have a different impression of, of how good he is. I think they know he's good, but he's very tough. Absolutely. And so, um, you know, they I'm make a school claim. teacher myself, exactly. you know. Exactly. You know how it, how it goes. And so, um, but we are, are very fortunate in that regard. So over the summer, you know, these students are going to take classes during the day. Um, those classes are going to be in math, um, science, English, um, comp comp uh, composition. Uh, also, Spanish is the, typically the foreign language. We'll do some electives in the afternoon, and of course, we'll have some fun activities for them as well. We'll do um, a cultural activity or cultural events on the weekends and um, give them a chance to make that transition because, as you stated, it's not just academic, but it's making that transition socially and mentally to say that I'm ready for this. And so by having that chance to kind of practice or, or do a trial run, if you will, um, students are a lot more successful, a lot more interested and eager to start the process if they know what they're expecting. I heard you say that, you know, part of the objective is to, you know, at least <clears throat> prepare the students to be to make meaningful contributions to society. And um, now, ha does it just focus on college, or do you just kind of realize that there are other areas, or just any kind of higher education? Our training. Um, well, our focus is to help students um, prepare, um, apply to college, and graduate from college. That is the objective of the TRIO programs. Now, having said that, even for students, if they decide, um, typically it's not until they get to be a senior and if they're having some reservations or for some reason it doesn't work out, then maybe they do something else, like go to the military or maybe get a technical or get a trade um, skill or something of that nature. But our focus is on getting them to Well, that's college. good because, you know, it takes training it does. Uh, to be, uh, I mean, you can't go wrong with that preparation for, for these students. And I understand that, you know, nothing succeeds like success. And I know a better saying is that the proof is in the pudding. And I understand that very recently uh, you had something to happen as it relates to two students who were in your program that made you very proud. I did, I did. Um, we have um, two students. Um, they're actually twins, uh, uh, Brandon oh, wow. and Brenton uh, Jackson, and they were interviewed recently because they're valedictorian and salutatorian at their school uh, at Westside, and they mentioned the importance of Upper Bound or the role that Upper Bound played in their success. And so it was really um, satisfying and, and, and pleasing for myself as well as just our staff, in particular uh, Kim Flanders and Dominique Johnson. Um, they will be interviewed fairly recently uh, by the Telegraph to talk about those students and some of the things that they've done with them. And so, you know, they were a pleasure to work with, um, very well behaved, and just an outstanding example. And, you know, it's not something that you see all the time, but it's something that we should be seeing. Right. So I, I look forward to those young men doing great now, things. It's, it's two, 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 two twins. Boys, males, or villains? Males. Oh, yes. wow. And, mm -hmm. And they're brothers? They're, they're you know, brothers. I mean, I mean that, that certainly <laughs> does deserve, yeah. you know, because, you know, like, 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 like many other folk, we're worried about our young men. So to hear a success story yes. about them, you know, is certainly uh, warming, heartwarming. Uh, so can you think of any kind of a specific activity, you know, and then I want you to talk about what it takes for one to maybe be a part of Upper Bound. I'm sure that you all are busting out of the seams, but I'm sure there will be some people who are interested in applying. I don't know whether you've already uh, established your summer roster or not, but just talk about, you know, maybe in a little more detail, some of the activities uh, for this summer, and maybe a little bit about the ensuing year. Well, as I stated, we are about to start our summer component, and um, you know they'll take those classes, um, the various cultural activities, um, tutoring, all of these things will be a part of it. And um, in addition to that, so if someone's interested in applying, we are currently accepting applications for the fall. 
and applications are on our website, um, which is um, HTPPS colon um, forward slash forward slash www. No, no, no www. Sorry. Uh, it's mercer.upward.edu. Mercer.upward.edu. Yes. Okay, we'll put that up okay. on the screen okay. for you. And so you can go there to apply. Um, our application is online. And the application process, the, the criteria, for example, is we accept students who have completed the 11th or the 8th grade but not have completed the 12th grade. So they have to be a high school student. Um, we used to, by law or by our federal regulations, uh, only accept students in the 9th or 10th grade. But now we can accept students at any grade as long as they're a high school student in Bibb County. Um, our grant only serves Bibb County. Uh, we serve about 155 students. And we want students who are who have an academic need because we want you know to make sure that they are able to be successful later on. And the purpose of our grant is to assist those students who are already um, at some sort of disadvantage, whether it's you know they have problems taking test score taking tests, so maybe their CRCT scores aren't what they need to be. Um, in particular, those areas of, of reading and math, we look for students if they have a deficiency there. Um, we also want students, or it's always nice to have students that are involved and interested in, in being a part of the community and giving back to their community. Um, we will look at uh, interviewing the students if they're selected, and we have them come in with their parents because that, that parent piece is a very important aspect of that student being successful. So if nothing else, we want to make sure that that parent is supportive and committed to bringing them to the program. Um, each time that they're supposed to come from Richmond and Saturday and over the summer. And um, so as long as they do those things, you know, the process has gotten to be really competitive, uh, you know, at one point. Now I everybody first, who everybody applies can, does not get in. No, no. In fact, uh, the past two years, we've had double the amount of students apply wow. that we actually were able to wow. accept. Um, as I stated, we only serve 155 students. And that's not 155 new students every year. That includes the students who've been in our programs. Okay. Yes, for the past two, three so years. So your maximum capacity. Exactly. Is uh. So generally, we look at anywhere from you know 35 to maybe 50 students each year. Um, and so I think this past year we had well over 100 students to so, apply. To apply. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so even our alternate list is, is getting very lengthy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that that that's very very. Good. So, what kind of, why are you so excited mm -hmm. about it? You know, you started there and I can see the glow in your eyes, <laughs> you know. You know why I ask you that question? Because it's important. Students know when you care, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's one of the components, watch me now, as it relates to educating a child, not only as a director, well, talk about that, the importance of that from a community perspective, and also, um, doubling up on you, also talk if in any way the community can help or assist. You know, you and education is the key. <laughs> it is the key. I think uh, there's so many benefits of education. Um, your previous previous speaker spoke on some of those. You know, if you if you know better, you do better when it comes to your health, when it comes to how you raise your children, when it comes to um, the jobs that you select and, and um, how you invest your money. You know, that's one of the areas that the Department of Education has gotten um, really interested in is having people make better decisions when it comes to financial literacy. So, you know, that's one aspect of it. Socially, I think you, you interact a little bit better with your friends and your community because you're able to articulate the things that are important to you and the things that you want to do or want to accomplish. Um, I think, um, you know, in, in this day and age, you hear a lot on TV about the, um, um, the minimum wage being raised. And so, you know, it's going to be kind of difficult to get Congress to do that, as we've seen in the, in the news. And so you don't want to put yourself in a, in a predicament where that's the only type of job that you can get. So education is so important. I would also add that uh, to contribute to the tax base, you know, it's an investment. Um, and so it becomes key to making sure that our economy runs, that we have enough money to be able to pay down the deficit or whatever it may be on, cap on Capitol Hill that they're trying to do. But you have to make these investments in our children. And I know for me, 
uh, working with the program is something that I enjoy and I think this smile or glow or whatever you, <laughs> you mentioned uh, comes from being one of these students when I grew up. You know, my mother um, did not graduate high school, um, my father did not go to college and so it was a situation of when I got ready to go off to college she was really proud and basically she said you're going to go and that was all she could say. Uh, because she didn't know how I was going to go about doing it. She didn't know how to fill out the application. She didn't know anything about the FAFSA. And so, um, you know, when I got to uh, college, I didn't have a dorm uh, because I didn't go to orientation. I didn't have any financial aid or any of that stuff. Wow. I had to learn on my own because I didn't have a program like this. And so, um, you know, when I talk to students, it's always from that perspective of I know, I don't assume that you know how to do this or you know right. how to do that. And it's not necessarily the most difficult thing once a person knows, but until you, you learn that, you're lost. Right. And so, um, you know, I love that our program gets to be kind of a guiding light or have some assistance in that person reaching their potential. It's an exciting thing. Right. It is. Uh, I've heard a lot of talk about STEM mm. uh, lately and what science, technology, technology engineering, and, and math. math. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it seems that a lot of entities. Uh, are beginning to emphasize the importance of that. So talk a little bit about that and kind of educate not only the, the parents but the, the uncles and the uncles and the cousins and everybody else about how that plugs into, you know, uh, uh, success in this society from a present and futuristic perspective. Well, I think um, from on a national perspective, um, the U.S. has started to lag behind um, other nations, in particular um, uh, China and um, I believe it's India. Those are the two that are the leaders when it comes to STEM. And so one of the reasons that that becomes important is because we have so many jobs that require uh, advanced degrees and especially technical type degrees. So when we look at the amount of people that we're producing, um, we're going to have a, a, a dire shortage, even in the amount of doctors. They, they've announced recently that there's going to be a shortage um, in that area as well. And so it becomes important for several reasons, not only for the future of our nation, but as students, you know, we want to, or as you know, parents or students, you want to know that once you finish college that you'll have a, a good chance of getting a decent job. And so when, when students are in those areas, they typically do fairly well, particularly engineering, um, mathematicians. I don't know too many mathematicians that you know, are unemployed, to be quite honest, and certainly uh, science and technology is, is a huge thing these days with all these you know, Facebook, Instagram, and all these other wow. avenues that they just create their own jobs. Right. And so it just gives students um, a lot of opportunity to uh, explore what their interests are and kind of create their own way rather than waiting on someone else to give them a job. But it's very, very important in our society because, you know, those are the basics when it comes to um, any sort of, I mean, mathematics is the basis for pretty much all things, uh, whether they be science, you know, it's rooted in, in a lot of math, um, English, all types of things. So it's very important that students focus in those areas. And one of the ways that um, the research shows that you get students to do that is to get them early. It really is. So I know when it comes to, you asked earlier about having the community be involved, you know, it, it, when they're seven and eight years old, take them somewhere, um, maybe to Warner Robins, to the um, uh, aerospace, Museum of Aviation. Thank you. The Museum of Aviation. Um, we also have, gosh, let's see, there's a, the Science Museum over at Wesley. Is it? Right. Yeah. right. Take them to some of these places. And the Museum of Arts and Sciences. Exactly. There are plenty of uh, opportunities and, and avenues right here in Macon, Georgia, or in surrounding neighborhoods that can motivate them and encourage them to pursue fields like that. And I think the other thing is, is to be, as a community member, is to be supportive, especially when you talked about our, our young black men, that when they want to do things like that, we don't look at them strange, you know. They, that should be something that they strive for, and not necessarily to be rappers and, you know, basketball players, not to say that there's anything wrong with those fields, but we need more people that are um, in the science area and STEM areas. Oh, that is so outstanding. This is a call to action. A call to action. I'm your host, Alex Habersham, uh, interviewing uh, Dr. Uh, Michelle Curry, who's the director of the TRIO program, uh, which is based at Mercer University. And I want to give a shout out to Mercer, too, not only for 
the TRIO program, but that university has done a phenomenal job in this community with arts and sports and the College Hill Cardinals and the Lofts, just everything. So Mercer is really uh, uh, making a positive contribution to our community. I'm going to interview uh, Mr. Larry Brumley soon. You know, he doesn't know it yet, but I'm <laughs> going to interview him. Uh, well, we're just about run out of time, but uh, if someone wants to learn more about, you know, what you're doing and your successes and your challenges and maybe do some volunteering or seeing if there's any way they can assist. How can they get in touch with you um, or somebody at your office? Right? Okay. Um, the number for our office is 478-301-2686 and um, I can connect you from there to any of our three TRIO programs. Uh, if they need some, some help and want to be a part of the programs. Uh, as far as volunteering, they can check our website, the Upper Bound website. So you do take volunteers? We do um, on a limited basis, just because usually our volunteers end up being the parents. And, okay. um, you know, which we love our parents. And they need to volunteer. They you should know. volunteer. Yeah, I understand. But it's a matter of you got to volunteer and watch all the kids, not just your kids. Well, I understand. I understand. <laughs> but, yeah, so um, if we, especially on cultural activities, you know, a lot of times, if we have uh, two buses full of students, then, you know, we need more than just the staff that right, we currently right, have. Right. So I would say, um, yeah, call our, our number, and if you can't remember the website, you go on the Mercer's webpage and just type in up or down, and the website will come right, up. Just click right, on the first right. one there. And there's a link there that tells you about some of the activities right, that we have right. going on. Well, I, as a member of this community, and as one who is familiar yes. with uh, the Upper Bound program, and a little familiar, with some of the others. I want to thank you and I want to thank everybody who's involved and, and because it has been a phenomenal service, you know, you. Uh, to the community. And matter of fact, I think that my general manager, um, Ms. Lisa Gillian, I believe she, I believe she went through Upper Bound. Right, right. And um, I got two brothers, uh, Lynn and Lee Habersham, okay. you know, who went through Upper Bound. So it has played a role and I remember from way back, you know, how young people would be excited yeah. about not only the summer program, but by, about being a part of Upper Bound and, and, and other programs that would make a difference in their lives. So I want to thank you. You know, I want to congratulate you. How, when did you become Dr. Curry? Uh, in 2012. Congratulations. Uh, it's interesting. You, so you talked about STEM. Uh, that was what my dissertation was on. Oh, STEM. Oh, yeah. Success factors of black faculty at predominantly white institutions, um, of black STEM faculty at predominantly white institutions. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. congratulations again. And I'm proud of you. And I know the whole community is, Dr. Curry. So, Thank you. you know, and that shows the importance of uh, advancing. You know, you didn't just stop there. You continue to educate yourself, so I think you deserve, mm -hmm. you know, some recognition for that. This is a call to action. A call, call to, to action. action. And on behalf of my producers, Andrea and Trace Cron, we want to thank you for watching. And if, in fact, you have uh, some suggestions or comments about the show, please give us a call at 478-464-0074. Uh, we appreciate uh the opportunity to interview uh, all of our guests from this uh, bodacious, uh, I'm calling that word, <laughs> facility here at the Ruth Mosley, Ruth Mosley Center, and we appreciate uh, Jerry McCoy, the executive director and the board of Ruth Mosley for allowing us to provide this service to the community from this facility. This is a call to action. A call, call to, to action. action. I'm your host, Alex Abersham. Have a great day. www.makingblackpages.com